Don't flip-flop in your argument. If your idea is valid, there's no need to do that. But remember that even when you show up respectfully with your argument, you, you stick to your guns, you bring a solution to the table, that doesn't mean that your boss is always going to agree with you. Welcome to the Workforce Link Podcast, where we're offering forward-thinking conversations for the workforce, linking employers and job seekers to a brighter tomorrow. I'm your host, Sunday Joe Graham, and I am glad to be back with you for another episode today. You're not always going to agree with everything your boss says or does, right? Unfortunately, many of us, I think, assume disagreeing with our boss equals losing our jobs. But most of the time, that is not the case. Okay, so yes, your boss is just that, your boss, meaning they are superior to you. But that doesn't mean that they're perfect. They make mistakes. You won't always have the same opinion as them. That doesn't mean that they're always right. So can you disagree with your boss without burning bridges? The answer is yes, and we're going to talk about how to fight well with your boss in today's episode of The Workforce Link. Before we do that, I have a quick favor to ask. Word of mouth is the biggest way to spread the word, and we would love your help. So would you mind sharing this podcast with friends and coworkers? We're grateful for you doing so, for for sharing, for spreading the word. So thank you in advance. All right, let's dive into how to fight well with your boss. The first thing you want to do is learn how to disagree without being dreadful. So before disagreeing with your boss, try to understand the point that they're trying to relay. Uh, Make sure you have a clear picture of that. And I would also add this, never argue for the sake of arguing, okay? That just makes you foolish. And you're not going to keep a job long that way, or you're definitely not going to keep the respect of your leader or your team. You can respectfully disagree without being intense, without adding tension to the room, okay? But on the other hand, don't, you know, make your boss dread ever wanting to have a conversation with you. So learn how to disagree without being dreadful. Number two, keep your emotions out of it. If you see or hear something that you disagree with, remember to keep your emotions out of it. If you try to dive forward with emotions, especially negative ones, it's going to make your argument weak. And, it, you know, the rest of the conversation is going to go to south, going to go south really quickly. So remember that you disagree with your boss's opinion, right? Not your boss. And I briefly mentioned that a while ago, but I want to say it again. If you, if you want to lose merit quickly, start going at your boss with a raised voice, with an attitude, with your arms flapping, with your face red. You're not going to make any progress, right? Keep it civil. Keep it respectful. So remember to keep your emotions out of it. Number three, be concise and clear in your argument. So we've already talked about making sure you understand the point your boss is trying to make, but you also want to take the time to make sure that you have a clear understanding of the point you're trying to make, especially before you bring that thought to your boss. You want to know what you disagree with and you want to present it in a way that your boss too can understand. So make sure that you let your boss know that you appreciate the point they're trying to make. Okay. Uh, For an example, you could say you make a great point, but can I bring something to your attention? So by asking that, right, and doing so respectfully, showing that you appreciate them, you've, you've knocked down any defensive walls. Well, you've tried anyway, and that has opened the door for great conversation, right? So be concise and clear in your argument. Are you looking for career training without even having to leave the house? Good news for you. We have recently launched the Career Club, a virtual work experience for job seekers ages 14 to 24. Here's how it works. We assist you with job seeking skills, personal management skills, meeting employer expectations, money management principles, good work habits, and more. After training is complete, you'll receive job placement, which allows you to implement your newly developed skills. And here's the really cool part. You get paid while you learn. That's right. You'll receive $13 an hour while participating in the virtual training with a possible transition to a higher wage upon job placement. This is an exciting opportunity to earn while you learn. To sign up or learn more, visit cwdregion.com slash career club. That's cwdregion.com slash career club. And now back to the show. All right, number four, keep your argument private. Something I don't recommend you ever do is to disagree with your boss publicly. 
Now, this doesn't make your boss better than you, but it's it just comes down to a respect thing. Have a conversation with them when it's just you two. And this keeps you both, uh, your boss and you, looking good to the rest of the team. And and also, it, it makes I think it makes your boss remember you for, for your teachability, for your level of respect, for the integrity you show by not trying to embarrass them in public. Whether you're, you're trying or not trying, it just it easily opens the door for that, okay? So make sure you keep your argument private. Number five, bring a solution to the table. So you want your thoughts and your plans squashed really quickly, then show up to the conversation to your boss without ideas. If you show up and you say, you know, I don't agree with the way we're doing so and so, but you don't have an alternative solution, you're wasting everybody's time. If you want to be an asset to the company, you have to be ready to solve problems. So show your boss that you're a critical thinker. Show them that you're innovative. And then even if your boss disagrees with your solution, you're going to earn a, a lot of times you're going to earn their respect just for showing up with the solution. OK, so bring a solution to the table. Number six, know your boss's limit. You know, not every leader is going to receive criticism well. Only some bosses are going to be open to what you have to say. So if you know your boss isn't open to your opinions, then investing the mental energy to fight well with them is not worth it. You know, if your boss is aggressive and closed off, I think disagreeing with them is probably the last thing that you should be worried about. I think you should instead seriously consider finding a career with a healthier leader. So make sure you know your limits and make sure you know your boss's limits. Okay. Number seven, commit to your argument and be okay with hearing the word no. Don't flip flop in your argument. If your idea is valid, there's no need to do that. Okay. But remember that even when you show up respectfully with your argument and you stick to your guns and you bring a solution to the table, that doesn't always mean that your boss is going to agree with you, right? And, and if that's the case, you can still disagree. But now is the time to respectfully commit to your boss's proposal and move forward. And remember, I, th I think this is really important to remember because they're, they're going to notice how you respond or how you react to their decision. So if you can get on board and you can respectfully agree despite your opinion, people are going to pay attention to that. OK, so commit to your argument and be OK with hearing no. Okay, let's do a quick recap on how to fight well with your boss. Number one, learn how to disagree without being dreadful. Number two, keep your emotions out of it. Number three, be concise and clear in your argument. Number four, keep your argument private. Number five, bring a solution to the table. Number six, know your boss's limit. And number seven, commit to your argument and be okay with hearing no. Don't be afraid to fight well with your boss, okay? But make sure you have a valid argument. And if you need some help uh, expanding your job skills or you're interested in more training, we would love to help you. We have staff at eight different job center locations plus some affiliate locations throughout the central region and they are ready to help you. So you can find your closest job center today at cwdregion.com slash job centers. That's cwdregion.com slash job centers. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, would you mind leaving a review and sharing it with somebody else that you think could benefit? Let us know what you enjoy about the show. It really does mean a lot to us and it helps us stay visible so that others can easily find us. Have a great week and we will meet again in the next episode. Until then, remember this, there's always a brighter tomorrow if you're willing to find it. The Central Region Workforce Development Board Incorporated and COPIC are equal opportunity employers and programs. Auxiliary aids and services are available upon request to individuals with disabilities. Missouri Relay Services at 711.